the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As the announcer said, I'm Father Mel Rusnak from Struthers, Ohio. The GPS got me here safely. And many of you, if you're a visitor, welcome. If you're a member of St. Robert's, welcome. If you're an angel, welcome. I mention that because angels you can't see. And most of our one or two uh, relatives we can't see anymore because they're in heaven. But every Mass brings them closer to you and to I. For the angels and saints are with us. Our relatives are with us. And of course, one another. Let us take a moment as we prepare ourselves with the sign of the cross and the greeting in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Once again, the Lord be with you. We know that God is good and he forgives us every day. Let us take a moment as we now present to him our lives. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him, and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again, but the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering for God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? 
Jesus answered. And he said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets. They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate and manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that come down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The gospel of of the Lord. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that there are some people in this parish who used to come here to church, but somehow or other they're, they're not coming. And it's not because of the pandemic. It's just they're not coming. There are people in many of your families that used to be very active Catholic Christians, but they're not anymore. And it could be for reasons of how priests behave. It could be because of reasons of what happens in the church. They don't like the music. <laughs> they don't like you. They're not coming. I can't. I'm new. They, they like me, but not you. <laughs> I forget who wrote this. They said, uh, I love my parish. I love my parish. I just can't stand the people. <laughs> you get the point. I came across this little pamphlet that it just struck my attention. It says, 10 top reasons to come back to the Catholic Church. 10. What do you think they are? Well, we don't have enough time to read them all. I'll give you the 10th one and the first one, and they're done according to importance. Because they want meaning in life, because they want meaning in life, that's the 10th one. The hustle of today's busy lifestyle, lots of people suddenly realize that their lives have lost a sense of meaning or purpose. They begin to ask themselves questions like, what is my life all about? Why do I do what I do? <laughs> That's a good one. Why do you do what you do? So I can earn money. Really? Money. Get that out of our minds. What money won't buy. Really. <clears throat> money will buy a a 
beautiful bed, but I won't buy sleep. Money will buy books, but not brains. Money will buy food, but not an appetite. Money will buy a house, but not a home. Money will buy medicine, but not health. Money will buy luxuries, but not culture. Money will buy sex, but not love. Money will buy amusements, but not happiness. Money will buy a crucifix, but not a savior. Money will buy a church, but not eternal life. Be careful about that money in your pocket or in the bank. It can be dangerous. Well, what do you think the very first thing is to bring people back to church? The most important. Because, number one, because they hunger for the Eucharist. They hunger for the Eucharist. How many here are hungry? Right now, hunger. <laughs> How many had breakfast? One, two, three, four, five, six. How did you know I was going to preach long? Huh? <laughs> you had breakfast before. Those who didn't have breakfast are going to be looking at their watches and say, oh, Father, hurry up, hurry up. That first reading, which we all kind of heard, uh, uh, Elijah went to sleep, you know. Actually, he wasn't going to sleep. He was so depressed, and he, he, he was so overcome with fear. He had just done some bad things to, queen, to the queen Jezebel, and she was after him big time. And he was running, running away. He wanted to die. Said, God, God, you know, take me. Miserable. And, he, and God sent an angel. Made some food for him. Touched him and woke him up. He went back to sleep. You know, that's a problem in the church. We have a difficulty waking people up to what's important. Money. No. Comfort. No. For the last several weeks, in the Gospel of John, we've been hearing about the miracle of Jesus, making food for lots of people. People don't believe in Jesus as a miracle worker. I was about, how old are you in the second grade? Seven, eight? I made my first communion when I was a little, little kid. How many of you made your first communion when you were a little kid? Really? Wow. And how many of you are still little kids? <laughs> little, yeah, you are. They are very good. When did you make your first communion? Second grade at how many years ago? <laughs> You're not sure? That's okay. <laughs> well, anyway, what? When you're a little kid, they, they usually tell you this truth. Listen up, 
those who are uh, not Eucharistic ministers, but DREs. How do you, um, mothers, fathers, how do you teach your child the difference between the Eucharist, Holy Communion, and the bread that they're going to eat, the pizza they're going to eat later on today? How do you do that? If they don't see the difference, then why come to church? You have to see the difference. Well, it tastes different. That ain't it. You have to see the difference between Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection. Take a moment the next time you come into church early and just look at this image of Jesus like this without any scars, without any um, crown of thorns, a smile, fully clothed. And why are his hands like this? He's reaching out. And there's a Thomas in here, I'm sure. Anybody's named Thomas? <laughs> well, now it is if you're not sure about the Eucharist. That was Thomas's exact point. His best friends, his closest friends could not convince him. When Jesus appeared to them, and you know, they were all excited. So Thomas told me, guess who came to see us? You guys are off the wall. Not until I can put my hands into his wounds nor and into his side will I believe. Thomas had a mindset that was just like today, scientific. I have to touch it. I have to see it. I have to measure it. Take a look again. Will this convince anybody who has the attitude of a Thomas? Nope. It's beautiful. But you can't put your hands in his womb. So what are you saying, Father? I'm saying, if you're hearing me, and you too, and you, and you, and you, that you and I have to become as much as we can just like Jesus. So that when they see us, they'll say, wow, why, why are you turning the other cheek? Hit the person back. Insult them. Sue them. Take out your gun. Shoot him. Our Savior, our Lord, would not say that. You see, if you meet a saint, and I have, you're, you're changed. Well, what saint did I meet? The way you come to communion today, I'll see it. The way and how you say your amen, I'll hear it. And the way you prepare for every Mass will make a difference. I think it was St. Alphonsus Liguori 
who asked the question which we all can ask, namely, I've gone to church many times. I've received many times the Eucharist. Why am I not a saint yet? He suggested two things that we all can do. Prepare when you come to church to receive the living Christ. Prepare before you get here. Read a, read a little prayer that talks about Jesus and his great sacrifice. Even if you can't find a prayer like me, <laughs> there might be one you memorize. Have you memorized any prayer at all in your life that has to do with Jesus? How about this one? Jesus, I love you with my whole heart, my whole soul, and my whole mind. Thank you for what you have given me. That's not hard. That's what children do to their parents. When they come up to mom and they say, Mom, I love you with my whole heart, my whole mind. Dad, you're the greatest dad on earth. We know how to express love in words and gestures. Don't you believe that Jesus wants to hear those words before you come to church. The second thing that St. Alphonsus said, after you receive the Eucharist, spend a little time thanking him before you leave the church. In my life, I've learned one thing about God that has convinced me to, that he's alive and that I can't wait to get to heaven. And this is the one thing that I learned. You cannot be more generous than God. You cannot. And if you want proof in money, money, whatever you decide or have decided to put in your offertory, that's good. But if you put a little bit more, watch what happens. If you're driving your car and there's a big line of people in front of you, and there's somebody trying to come out, but has to wait because of the line, and you say, hmm, maybe I'll stop, let him come in front of me or her. And the car comes in front. Within a matter of one hour or one day, that person will continue the same favor at some situation because of what you did. You see, we, we pay attention and we're formed by acts of kindness. If you look at all the people that taught you in school, all the people that you met in your life, the ones you remember are the ones who treated you nicely. You never forget them. So too, God wants us to give thanks. And so I close now with the preparation that we need as we come to recognize 
who and whose we are. Who we are is one thing, but whose we are, who do we belong to? A more important question. And when is that answered? In the creed. That's who we find out. Who God is and what he did to help us become divine. You see, he didn't just come to this earth to make a show. He come to this earth to change our humanity into his divinity. I know it's big words, but when you can turn the other cheek, when you can shut off the pornography on your phone, when you can pick up the scraps and the litter that is on the highway, then you have the mind of Christ. You're getting closer. for our profession of faith. Believe what you say and say what you believe. Together, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the needs that we have. God is always generous in giving us the help we need, even if we do not always realize it. We come now with faith, recognizing our need for that generous help. Please respond. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may always reach out in Christ's name to offer bread to those who hunger, drink to those who thirst, and life to those in despair, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who serve in public office, may they always seek the good of others and the well-being of society rather than power and wealth, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation, may we live the Christian ideals on which it was founded and remember our dependence on God, we pray. 
Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who gather in this Eucharistic table, may it be a place of welcome and comfort for our parishioners and those who are visiting. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Father Kish, who had surgery this week, may he know God's healing presence through the strength and prayers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We especially remember Jeff Hodnick. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. All loving God, you know what we need better than we do? Open our hearts and minds so that we may recognize what you are asking of us and give us the faith and the love we need to be your prophets, even in the smallest of ways. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The altar is placed with bread and wine on the table. It's missing one thing, your intentions, your petitions, what you want to tell God. Spiritually, you speak that in your heart, in your mind, and that too gets offered to God through the words of the church, through the sound of my voice, and to our Father in heaven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creation serve you all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. And therefore, we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all of the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, 
who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. To all of you, may the peace of the risen Christ be with you always. You may acknowledge the sign of peace from a distance to one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter to my roof, but let me say the word. Thank you. 
in thanksgiving, let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Are you hungry? Me too. Let us continue, though, to eat the food that will nourish us forever with an awareness of God in our life. And now we prepare to leave. Bow your heads. Pray for God's blessing. May God enrich you with his gifts of the Spirit. May you know the presence of God in your life. May you always carry the presence of God in your life. And may you meet that presence in the other people you, you see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today's Mass celebration is ended, but now we go forth and become a witness to Jesus Christ. Thank you.